Senior economics reporter Steve Leisman joins us now uh, with a review and a preview. And I was again struck by what I thought was uh, some great analysis right on um, immediate analysis you had that it wasn't quite as strong as it may have appeared on the surface on Friday. And then I just was back to thinking, so that's like really good that it wasn't as good. And I was back to thinking how bad that is. That once again, we were looking for, <laughs> right? We were looking for holes in that report to show that it was weaker than it was yeah. on the surface, hoping we'd find some, which is again because we're at sort of held hostage by, by this crazy uh, thing we got to do for inflation. Joe, we should spend a moment to stipulate that despite our differences, both you and I want people to work, we want people yeah. to make good money. Um, yeah. And, and despite that, we have to sit around here and say, well, this is good or this is bad They're making because less money of and what the, it means for the Fed working. and what it means yeah. for the outlook and what it and what it means for stocks. And we all want we all want that to happen. It's just that we'd like. I mean, look, the idea of the job market being too hot is is a particular issue. But Joe, I just want to talk about both the job and the banking report, which both came out on Friday, and the market's view at the end of the day of all of that. It was just agreed with me that. The market saw the Fed as more likely to hike despite weakness in both measures. The key is this right here. Both measures have weakened, but they're not weak or weak enough to be happy about the Fed not hiking. 236 on the payrolls, the lowest since the pandemic, still double the level needed to find jobs for new entrants to the workforce. The unemployment rate ticked down even with 800,000 plus coming into the workforce in the past two months. Some see more weakness ahead. Ian Shepherdson writing over the weekend, quote, March likely saw the last 200,000 plus payroll print until the next cyclical upswing. We expect 150 in April, 50 in May and outright declines in the summer. That's bad, but it's good. Bank deposits. They've seen massive outflows since the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. They've stabilized, though, Enough right now, the bank lending, though, has fallen sharply. Commercial and industrial loans, a lot of people talking about this, plunging $60 billion over the past three weeks, but they remain above the pre-pandemic level. So again, weaker, but not weak. Market took in all this data. They got a chance, some of them did on the trade on Friday, decided the Fed more likely to hike with the probability of a quarter point hike rising around 70% right now. It had been about even before the job report. That echoes Fed comments. They've suggested the banking issues not enough to halt the fight against inflation, which means more rate hikes. We'll see if that remains the case this week. We got half a dozen Fed speakers, CPI on Wednesday, which is expected to show some moderation on headline, but not in the core. And then we're expecting negative retail sales data for Friday. That's bad, Joe, but maybe it's good. The average depositor at a regional bank, Steve, your, your run-of-the-mill regional bank, not in Silicon Valley. Do they have 250000 right. Do they have over $250,000? Doesn't 95% no. no. of average depositors at community and regional banks yes. have under... So yeah. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much I'm... I don't know how scared I really am about that. Maybe I should be more, but the, we keep hearing it's the nowhere problem near... Is, yeah, go ahead. G Jim Bianco's been writing this interesting idea about not a bank run, but a bank walk. And I want to explain this because it's something that I'm trying to figure out and follow carefully, and I think you are too. It, it comes down to this. The, the issue right now is no longer safety. We don't see the deposit flight that looked like it was people scurrying for the safety of the FDIC. It's about interest rates, Joe. It's about the idea that once the Fed hikes again, uh, you're going to have a five print on the funds rate. You may have a five print on money markets. So people look around and they say, you know what? And look at your big banks, Joe. I was looking at the one that I use. I don't know if I want to name it because I wasn't exactly sure that I found its rate structure. But I still think I'm getting 0 0.01 in my checking and 0 0.02 in my savings account on, on that money right there, which is crazy, right? Yeah. So these banks have to increase their, their deposit rates. Right. That's going to pressure. We got bank earnings coming up. It's going to be a very big deal. So this idea of a bank walk, people looking around and saying, I don't know what I'm doing in this bank anymore, and then moving to money markets or other places where rates are higher. That's probably not intentional, Steve. They, they probably, you know, it's an oversight probably. They just didn't notice that they're only paying 0.1%. They're no. probably not deliberate or they, they wouldn't, uh, would they? Actually, Joe, there is thinking that it is deliberate. 
if you think about it, let's say you're a bank and you don't want to pay up for deposits. You don't want to hurt your net interest margin. Let the, uh, the, the, the flighty deposits go. What's left are the yeah. sticky deposits that don't demand a lot of rates. Those are more profitable deposits. Well, yeah. They're, 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 they're keeping all the float on whatever, whatever that money's earning somewhere is going to the bank, not to you. Right. Yeah. The, trouble on, you, the trouble on the other side of that, Joe, is, is fewer deposits means they're not going to be making the loans on the other side. And that's where the economic impact of a yeah. credit contraction would come through. Okay, thanks, Steve.